Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome to my stop on the October 2024 Oh So Inspired Collaboration Hop. Each month, I get together with some of my crafty friends for this inspirational hop. We each take the same piece and create something new based upon it, or we're oh so inspired by it. Sometimes this might be the color palette like I'm going to do today. It might be trying to recreate it completely or using the theme. As you hop along, you're going to see a wide variety of creations from that original piece. Speaking of hopping along, once you're done with my video, to check out what all the rest of the team members have created, you can use the playlist link that's an end card at the end of my video. I also have the playlist link and individual channels linked in that description box below. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see how they were inspired, and leave them some love. This month's inspiration piece is up on screen now, and it was created by Caroline of Carussell Crafts. I will have this original blog post linked down in the description box below, so go make sure to leave her some love on that post as well. I was originally going to make some mini cards, kind of like in the inspiration pieces, but then at a second look, I really fell in love with all of the different colors of those cards in the background. So I'm going to kind of use it as a color palette, and I'm going to be doing some paper weaving for my card today. As I get into the process, I will tell you all about the products and tools I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For today's colors, I got out some scraps in eggplant, pineapple, candy corn, blue raspberry, and mold wine. Some of the scraps I pulled out already had things cut out of them. I just made sure that I would have enough of an edge to cut four quarter inch tall strips. For the base of the weaving, I will be using the basket weave cutting plate from Tailored Expressions and I got out another quarter sheet of mold wine. This cuts out your weaving piece and the negative pieces you could use for weaving, but because these are a little bit differently sized than the quarter inch I want, I'm just going to save them for a later project. For my weaving pieces, I pulled back in those scraps, and because I want to make sure that they fill that plate from left to right and go a little over, I just left these at whatever width they were, and then I cut strips that were a quarter inch wide. I'm going to be using the quarter inch line to the left of my cut line, and then I just move it from right to left, cutting four of each color. Let me know down in that comment section below if you've ever done any paper weaving on a card. And did you use a die like I have or just use strips and weave them together? Once I had all of the strips cut, I put them on my work surface in the order I wanted them to go on that final grid. Because the grid is mold wine, I am going to skip that as the first piece and go on to candy corn. Then all I do is I go over that rightmost strip under the next, over, under, over, under, and so on until the strip is completely through there. I am going to go ahead and push it to the top of my weaving piece and then I'm going to grab the, what is it, the pineapple and this time instead of starting over, I start under and just every other one just fill this piece from top to bottom. When you get toward the end, things do get a little bit tighter and harder to weave, so I skipped to the very last one, the blue raspberry. I made an opening between that and the candy corn, and then I slipped in that last pineapple, and you'll see here that I almost had it figured out perfectly. I just had two strips left over. For the next step, I put my weaving piece face down and brought in art glitter glue. Now what I'm going to do is go along the back and the pieces that are over on the right side, I'm going to put a dot of glue onto the frame and then I held each strip in place for the count of five before moving on to the next one. You're going to do this down the right side, 
turn it around, do along the other side, and then it gets flipped to the front and the same thing happens. I did let this dry probably for about five minutes so everything was nice and adhered. And then I brought in my long bladed non-stick scissors and I did my best to cut off the excess trying to keep my blade right along the edge of the weaving frame. Now if you're going to have a party this is the perfect project to make yourself some confetti. Off camera I got a top full card base ready and I put a scrap of white on the inside for the personal message. To adhere my weaving piece to the front, I'm using some ATG, and because it's kind of bumpy on the back, I did do a little bit extra adhesive than I normally might. For my focal point today, I'm going to use the image over on the right from Tailored Expressions Sketchbook Florals. I chose this one because the example shows it with multiple colors, and I thought I'd be able to match my Olo markers to the cardstock scraps. I'm going to be stamping onto a piece of Expressive Blending cardstock with Oreo ink, which is alcohol marker friendly. Now, I did heat set this for just maybe five seconds off camera before I colored it, but it did end up working very well. Because I wanted a nice crisp black, I did go ahead and stamp it a couple times. And then I brought in my markers for coloring. I got a green for the stem, and for my other colors, I tried to match the cardstock as best as I could. I will list the numbers individually down in that description box below. As you know, if you've been around my channel long, my favorite thing is not coloring, but when images have smaller openings like this one does, I do like to pull out my Olo markers. I start by putting down the darker shade where the shadows might be on the image and then blend it out to the rest of the open area with the lighter color. I am going to show you here a little bit of the coloring and I'll turn on some music while I do. Once my image was all colored, I brought in the coordinating die to cut it out, and then I tested this on my card front. And I didn't think it stood out enough with that colorful background, so I die cut an oval of vellum to put behind it. This way you can still see the weaving behind it, but it helps my focal point stand out. Now it's time to get the sentiment ready and for that I'm using Hello from that same stamp set and I'm going to stamp it right on the vellum so I need to use some stays on ink. I temporarily tack down the floral to the vellum with a piece of scotch removable tape so that when I go to set up the stamp I know what area on the vellum will be open. To hold the vellum in place, since it has to kind of be out in the center, it can't go in a corner, I added some adhesive to the back and removed a little bit of the tack with my fingers. I did make sure to put that behind where the floral would cover it from the front because it might not clean off completely. Then, because I only have one chance at stamping this, I mean I could have cut another vellum oval, but I didn't really want to, I brought in a scrap of clear cardstock that I'm going to put over my focal point while I test out the sentiment. I got the stamp set up in the open area to the left of the floral, and then I picked it up with the door of the Misty, and I noticed right away it was already crooked, so I tried to adjust that using the etch grid on the door of the Misty, and then I inked it up and did a test stamp, and it actually turned out looking pretty good, so I removed the clear cardstock, and then I inked up and stamped the sentiment right onto the vellum. I did go ahead and ink it up and stamp it twice just to get a nice solid black. Now it's time to finish assembling the card. Before I can put the vellum onto the card front, I need to know where the floral is going to be so I can hide the adhesive. So for this, I did want to pop up the floral so I added some sticky strips to the back. And once all of that release paper was pulled, I brought in my Barely Art liquid glue and I added some to the foam tape. This way as I go to put it on the vellum piece, I have a little bit of wiggle time to adjust the floral if needed. 
Then when that was in place and I knew where I could hide my adhesive, I put some on the back of the vellum and got that centered as best as possible on the card front. I let that dry under a clear block off camera and I also added some drip drops to the front for some shine. And here are some close up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now I hope you'll join me in hopping along to the rest of the videos today by using the end card here in a minute or the links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.